We are very excited to have the Honourable Bardish Chagger here with us this morning. Uh, Minister Chagger is the House Leader. She was named by the House, uh, named by the Prime Minister as House Leader this past summer, which makes her the first female House Leader in Canada's history. She also is the first female full Minister of Small Business and Tourism in Canada's history. So for someone, uh, the, the only words I think she says more than Mr. Speaker every day are innovation, entrepreneurship, and Waterloo, which as you know is the hotbed of innovation in this country. We're very excited and we're very honoured to have Minister Chagger here this morning. Uh, so I'd like to welcome her to the stage to tell us what she's got in store. This is a pretty good speech. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Come on, there has to be a lot more life in here. We're like the future of the country. Good morning, everyone. That's what we're talking about. Susan, always an honor and a privilege to be in your company. I am, I thank you for that kind, the kind words of introduction. And I do thank the entire Canada 2020 team for inviting me here today. There's been a buzz in Ottawa, like there always is. Um, but the last couple days, especially, yesterday I was walking home from the, uh, Parliament Hill because the weather was so nice. And I had a few people ask me, like, are you going to be at Canada 2020? I said, Friday morning, I will be there. And there is no better way to start a Friday than to be amongst yourselves. And I see some great company here, including senators and colleagues. So welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. And I really do want to congratulate Canada 2020 on the 10th anniversary of being our country's most progressive think tanks. It's hard to believe that it was only 10 years ago that 200 passionate Canadians got together at Tremblant to chart a path towards a future for Canada. Your research and high profile events have gone a long way to helping shape public policy. And I applaud you, Susan, Tom, and Tim for your continuing vision and your leadership. I know you heard from my cabinet colleagues, Minister Sfoehi and Minister Carr yesterday and I'm certainly pleased to join them in representing government here. Our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, promised a whole of government approach, and that is what we deliver, even if it's spread out over a couple of days. Our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, um, sorry, I am here today not only as a representative of the Government of Canada, not only as Government House Leader, and not only as a Member of Parliament for the riding of Waterloo, but as an advocate for small business. Je suis ici aujourd'hui non seulement au titre du représentant du gouvernement du Canada, et non seulement comme leader du gouvernement à la Chambre des communes, ni seulement comme député de Waterloo. Je suis ici comme défenseur des petites entreprises. As the Minister of Small Business and Tourism, I'd like to discuss something very fundamental to the health of small businesses across the nation, diversity and talent. A quick glance across this room de demonstrates the impact of immigration on our economy. Everyone here is accomplished in their own profession, and dare I say, not everyone was born in Canada. I'll get to some stats in a minute, but I think you'll agree that Canada has always been a very welcoming country. We do so because it's the right thing to do. And we also do it because in Canada especially, Immigration drives economic activity. I want to emphasize this point. Our government is looking at immigration as an economic and social policy. We need to attract the right people to create jobs and economic opportunities at a speed that makes sense for business. I've been traveling across the country for about a year now, exchanging ideas with entrepreneurs. As you know, I've also been doing some extensive consultations as part of the inclusive innovation agenda that Minister Baines, Minister Duncan, and I launched this summer. Time and time again, our business leaders from startups to small and medium-sized enterprises tell us the same thing. Talent is key. And they need better access to talent from around the globe. This week's announcement of Canada's new global skills strategy by the Minister of Finance, my colleague, the Honourable Bill Morneau, answers that call. The strategy will set an ambitious two-week standard for processing visas and work permits for global talent. This progressive idea may sound familiar to you. Just last month, one of the big ideas published by Mike 
Moffitt, and Hannah Rasmussen of Canada 2020 was to streamline the process for SMEs to recruit and retain skilled workers from abroad. A brilliant idea. The global skill strategy is aimed at high growth Canadian SMEs that need the highly skilled global talent that's out there. Companies that can demonstrate increased investment, knowledge transfer, and Canadian job creation. Global companies making large investments in Canada, relocating operations here, or ex expanding existing production will also be able to reap the benefits of this fast track mechanism. So they can hire critical software engineers, computer scientists, and experienced executives amongst others. With their unique skill sets and multinational experience, these individuals will help innovate high growth SMEs to flourish. The end result, more middle class jobs for Canadians. Now, what else can we do to leverage our diversity? We need to take greater advantage of our population's international ties to keep our economy competitive. Immigrants are consistently more likely to be self-employed than non-immigrants. We have seen a steady increase in the number of self-employed new Canadians. In 1981, about 12% of new Canadians were self-employed compared to 10% of those born in Canada. By the late 2000s, it was 19% versus 15%. This diverse pool of self-employed new Canadians is an absolute strength for Canada, especially as we endeavor to compete in the new global economic environment where demand is subdued and investor confidence is tepid. What we can all learn from small businesses owned by new Canadians is their determination to sell their products and services in countries beyond the United States. 12% of them export beyond the US versus 7% for businesses owned by non-immigrants. And those numbers are even more pronounced in Quebec and Ontario. Make no mistake, the US is our most important trading partner. At the same time, we all know that con continued success relies on exploring commercial relationships outside of North America. With that said, businesses that export to markets other than the United States are among the fastest growing Canadian SMEs. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't wanna belabor the point. Put simply, our economy is dealing with an aging population and looming labor shortages. And in addressing these problems, I applaud my colleague the Minister of Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship, the Honorable John McCallum's leadership. Of course, diversity does not begin and end with immigration. There is also the pressing issue of encouraging equal participation in our economy. Equal participation. Did you know that only 15.7% of SMEs are majority owned by women? Did you know? I was shocked, I'll tell you, when I heard. So I have to be clear that I want more women to start their own businesses and I want more women-owned SMEs to export and innovate. 15.7%, that's not enough. Especially when you consider that among the major developed countries, Canada has the highest rate of women seeking to become entrepreneurs. Add this to the fact that majority female-owned small and medium-sized businesses are just likely are just as likely to engage in innovative practices as majority male-owned small and medium-sized businesses. That means there is an untapped potential in the entrepreneurship ecosystem. So what, what would our economy look like if we had more women-owned SMEs? I had another stat for you that hints to, at that answer. As a gap between men and women participating in the labor force has narrowed in the last 30 years, it's estimated that alone has boosted GDP about 7%. The gap between men and women is still about 10 percentage points. RBC estimates if we closed it over the next 20 years, we'd boost by the GDP by another 4%. So it's not just about opening doors for women, gaining and gaining different perspectives and diversifying our economy. It's about growing our economy for everyone. And then the question becomes, how do we unlock this potential? And let's start with the Business Development Bank of Canada, or better known as the BDC. They are doing tremendous things to help women entrepreneurs. 
First, the bank is well on its way to meeting its commitment of investing $700 million in women-owned businesses over the next three years. In fact, ever, after 17 months, it has funded almost $375 million worth of projects. In addition, the number of majority women-owned clients jumped 10.7% over the same period. This is a major progress, and I love it. And still, our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau says, better is always possible. Next week at the Canadian Women's Entrepreneurship Conference in Toronto, which I will be hosting, I will be announcing some more good news from the BDC's equity arm. It will include new initiatives and new funds designed to help women entrepreneurs tackle their biggest challenge, raising capital. Along the BDC's continuing efforts, we also have boots on the ground helping women, youth, and other underrepresented entrepreneurs through programs like IRAP and Futurepreneur. Case in point, El Ayub Zedeh. She is a futurepreneur who made headlines after Madame Gregoire Tudeau wore her Zvel brand of shoes throughout recent trips to Washington and Japan. And to top it off, she is donating $10 per shoe to Toronto's Women College Hospital for 2016. And that's exactly the kind of social value that we need to encourage. She's just one of many successful women who are taking advantage of Futurepreneur's support to grow and scale their businesses. And we need to make more progress on this. We must get more women involved at the grassroots level, more immigrants involved at the grassroots, and we must use Canada's diversity as a lever for growth. Nous avons des progrès à faire sur ce plan. Nous devons accroître la participation des femmes et la participation des immigrants. Nous devons faire de la diversité du Canada un levier de développement. Because it's not just at the cabinet table that we need to reflect Canada's population and demographics. We talk about the importance of gender parity in government. So we, so what about around the boardroom tables and what am, about amongst entrepreneurs and business leaders? We talk about diversity in the House of Commons, but what about the Canadian economy? We cannot leave talent on the sidelines any longer. Together we can and we will do something about it. So thank you for your time this morning. I wish you all a productive conference. I look forward to hearing what's coming from you and we will continue to do the same good work that we are doing together. But some of these points that I'm leaving with you, I really want you to consider. When we look at the data and we look at the stats, we have so much work to do. And I assure you that you have a government that wants to work with you so that we are all together part of the solution. So thank you so much. Merci beaucoup.